Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this is Outer Wilds, and in today's loop, I thought we'd ask the deep questions. What is really going on with the Nomai's third eye? Is it simply an extra lens to get more light through, or is it more than that? Let's dive deep into the lore to find out. So, to be honest, at first glance, I didn't think there was much to the notion of the Nomai's third eye being special. We have four of them, they don't have any fancy functions, so why should the Nomai's third eye? And, they were only really mentioned once or twice sort of passively in the game, nothing too important or concrete, so it felt more like an easter egg or conspiracy theory to me to believe this. But, this was a silly way to look at things, it's entirely possible they had some unique ability, and I think if we look closely, we can find more than just a few hints about the Nomai's third eye all throughout the game. And, when we find them, they tell us that they were basically telepathic when it came down to it, and at the end of the day, they were even telekinetically gifted too, all through the simple notion that their third eye did something special. And what I think this special ability is, is actually kind of simple. The ability to gather and transmit information to and from the universe around them simply by using their third eye. A lot how like bats use sound waves. But, it might not be actual sound waves, but rather the tiny vibrations of space itself. But, the underlying premise remains almost identical, little vibrations in the area being picked up and even transmitted through their third eye, and seemingly their third eye alone. And in theory, being able to sense these vibrations in space should allow you to sense light waves, sound waves, and maybe even gravitational waves as well. Theoretically, anything traveling through space should be able to be seen by the Nomai's third eye in some special way. Now, of course, this is all a theory and I have to actually give weight to it. But to me, the notion starts to gain a bit of traction when you consider the Nomai. The Nomai's entire way of life was to travel through space in order to search for new things in the universe, and basically for them to experience whatever the universe may throw at them for themselves, to seek out and understand. Whether it's an intergalactic flower patch in space, or simply marveling at the very fabric of space and time itself. They were intergalactic wanderers, and they've spent many generations doing just that. It makes sense to me if evolution would start to shift from the environment it's used to evolving the Nomai to, to this new intergalactic lifestyle. And seemingly, in my opinion, it did just that. The Nomai seemed to have formed this extra utility in their third eye, being able to perceive these tiny vibration changes in space. All purely from that concept of many generations going out and exploring the cosmos would surely continue to evolve, and this ability could be the thing that helped them survive and spread best. That way, they'd be able to notice when a nearby sun may be able to go spontaneously supernova, or if the ground around them just isn't stable, or simply put, to sense their surroundings to the best of their ability. And not only that, we actually get to see Solanum in action on the quantum moon's sixth location. But for a long time, I dismissed a lot of what we see at the quantum moon. I thought the quantum moon was just a reflection of the eye, and the eye is able to mess with reality a bit here and there. So I thought what we saw on the quantum moon with Solanum was just the eye's way of communicating with us a bit earlier, or at the very least, manipulating things to allow Solanum to communicate with us. And I dismissed a lot of the depictions of Nomai building without tools, just figuring it must have been human artists leaving out the tools because depicting them served no real purpose in the game. But after more consideration, I think I was wrong. But that's enough set up for how this would make sense or how this could have occurred. Let's get to the hard facts about what we know about the Nomai's third eye. We actually do have a few legitimate mentions we get from the Nomai themselves. One can be found on the Sun Station and inside the Ash Twin Projects. We can read a conversation between a few Nomai after the Sun Station failed. And in a saddened state, one of them says, The Sun Station fired, but the Sun barely responded at all. We only measured infinitesimally small changes to the surface level that were barely visible, even to the third eye. This paints a picture that their third eye is able to see things the others don't, and to an incredible extent if they're able to see things on an infinitesimally small scale. Another mention we have is when Nomai found the precursor species of the Harthians in the crater. 
they were at a potential mining site and they decided not to mine and they left a sign for the nomis and in this you know little conversation we can see that they were marveling at the fish's fourth eye and they wonder if the fourth eye does anything in particular now why would they wonder if our extra eye to them does anything in particular that's special if their eye didn't do anything special a third thing that's a bit more symbolic and, you know, kind of questioning everything, but it's when the Nomai statue activates and starts to take our memories, the statue's third eye is the one that opens, and our memories enter that third eye. So even symbolically, the Nomai's third eye was special to them. And we can also consider the Nomai's ability to even do such a thing at all. How does one capture and convert an entire being's thought into information and be able to store that in a statue? unless maybe their special third eye gave them the insight into some universal ability to be able to allow them to do this. Like maybe our brains or consciousness actually has a certain wavelength or vibration in the universe, and they're able to see and record this. But that's just a guess. And as I said, that one's just a little bit symbolically, and maybe, you know, I'm thinking too much on that, but the final thing that we have that's actually concrete, which isn't too big, is at the Quantum Moon 6 location, after having a long one-sided conversation with Solomon because we can't really communicate back with her, she still somehow knows that we have a fourth eye underneath our space helmet. There's only two ways this kind of makes sense. The Nomai are able to see in different light spectrums and they can just kind of like see through UV protected stuff and they can legit see our eye through the helmet, or maybe they can use the tiny vibrations of space alone to see our fourth eye underneath that helmet. But those four things are the only actual concrete evidence or kind of hints we have to the Nomai's third eye being special or unique. So the only way a lot of this stuff makes sense, to me at least, is if the picture I painted earlier is true, and the Nomai were able to use their third eye to do something special. And in my opinion, it makes most sense if it was able to sense these incredibly small vibrations within space itself. And that's how they could see the sun's surface level changes. And, as I mentioned, this particular ability would grant others, like being able to see the gravitational vibrations in space, all of the light spectrum vibrations, and even sound spectrum vibrations as well, because they are all just vibrations traveling through space. I used to think it was sound vibrations alone, but they would also have to be able to use these abilities in the vacuum of space as well, while out exploring and whatnot. They'd need to be able to communicate and, you know, Sound needs a medium to travel through, so now I think it's a different kind of vibration that just enfolds sound vibrations within them. Next up, we're going to talk about the Nomai staffs and their mass and how this would all pertain to their third eye, but I'm going to talk about it like it's true from here on, so, I mean, if you don't accept it, look at this as, like, a little bit more evidence. How else would she use the staff? And if you do, come have fun with me. So, like I said, from here, if we accept this notion, a lot of the rest of the Nomai story starts to make a bit of sense if they had this ability. Their entire civilization starts to make some real sense beyond just magical science shenanigans, because it seems the Nomai had a few invaluable tools at their side that served many functions. The only tools they would ever need, their space helmet's mask and their staff. Their staff is essentially an invented extension of their eyes' ability. Really, all we know about them is that they're staffs. But from what we see, I think it's safe to say they've built this staff around their eyes' ability. And we can see it do a bunch of different things. But now, I'm going to say what I think it all is. It could easily be a fancy computer setup with a bunch of different sensors. As of now, we have all kind of different great sensors in real life, but with the Nomai, you have to picture way better sensors than what we have now, and probably even more that we don't know about. But this fancy staff computer is taking in as much of the best information it can from the universe surrounding it and using these sensors. And for each thing the computer senses, it can be programmed to emit a unique, non-audible vibration. And so, just by listening, or more accurately seeing with their third eye, the Nomai would be able to identify and pick out these different vibrations from their computer that identifies stuff around them. This would almost instantly tell them their surroundings, and almost in a 3D map kind of situation. Probably a little better than their eye could alone. But I think their eye has a similar ability. 
and it seems like they were able to use this staff to great effect. If you were able to perceive and transmit tiny vibrations in time and space with your eyes, you'd be able to interface instantly with a computer which creates and runs off of these vibrations, no questions asked. You should even be able to do other seemingly amazing things like, like make sound wavelengths that actually emit light and so on. But at the very least, we know you'd be able to instantly interface with a computer, or at least at the speed of sound. And you could program this computer to tell you all kinds of fancy info. This may sound a bit odd, but I think the Nomai staffs, and even their third eye, act a lot like the sonic screwdriver in Doctor Who. They can just show up, wave it, or look around a bit, and get a very real understanding, and even be able to manipulate their immediate surroundings to an extent. Again, all at the speed of thought and sound. And it may sound like it, but this isn't really just magic. This is an actual in real life concept. By emitting sound waves or even light waves at certain frequencies and seeing what comes back to you, you can actually sense your surroundings. And you can even use different special frequencies to affect your surroundings, such as resonated frequencies, which have been known to levitate some objects and even shake whole buildings very violently, like earthquake, type stuff, like very violently. Except with the Nomai, they could probably even do this to individual atoms. Another in real life example is how we can use sand and put them on like a sheet and then when you place sound waves through them, we can see this sand move and form certain patterns as we play the sound wave through them. Or some scientists have been able to use lasers to levitate small objects. So you can see this all isn't just made up, I'm not just pulling out of my behind. This is all just kind of real scientific concepts that I'm applying to the Nomai and their third eye. But you can see that if we gamify it and perhaps attach it to the Nomai as an evolutionary trait, this all kind of starts to make sense, at least to me. Because funnily enough, when we see Solanum, we see the Nomai staff is able to both play sound through the Nomai mask and levitate objects by using this sound or something else, I guess. But when we see Solanum on the moon, she's able to move the stones around and make little stands for us and even lock these stands into place all by just waving her staff. And we even find these little signposts elsewhere as well. So it isn't just some fancy eye manipulation like I used to think. And not only this, it seems they were able to use their staff to imbue information into seemingly everyday objects. And they do this by using their staff and touching things with it. And when they do, it seems the staff has the mask play audible sounds. And the staff seems to be able to do all of this stuff with very minimal input from Solanum herself. The way we see Solomon use it, at best she taps the stone screen on the staff when she writes or plays sounds or something, but basically she sort of just waves it all around and makes it perform these functions, which includes writing, imbuing stone with information, and even cutting small stones out of larger ones if it's butter to let us pick them up, which may be, you know, that atomic resonance I was talking about before. But this makes the most sense to me if she's able to communicate with her staff through her eye. And that's how she's able to tell her staff to do all of these different things in just a wave. Now, that last part with the stones we're able to pick up actually reminded me of something else we see all throughout the solar system as well. The Nomai stones we find that have symbols of the planets or different locations. They are all cut into specific shapes and actually hold information. And when plugged into a Nomai whiteboard or projection pole, you can access that information to recall old Nomai conversations. So we can see that this ability wasn't just something special to the sixth location, again. And we can also use these stones to visually bring us to another location with the projection poles, which is my next hint that the Nomai may have had some mastery over vibrations. Now, at first, it may just seem like a sound effect playing, but when we plug in these stones and look down, yes, we may seem to be teleported elsewhere, just ignore that for the moment, the pool of golden liquid that we're standing in below us actually creates a fluid statue of us. And I think that the fluid in the projection pool is actually being influenced and manipulated by the sound we hear. So when the sound is played, our body takes shape there. And again, ferrofluid is a very real life thing, a fluid that takes shape when sound is played through it. So not entirely fantasy. 
And if sound waves are actually how the projection pool makes objects form, then we can see that the Nomai know so much about sound vibrations that they have certain frequencies for entire custom objects. They use these pools to depict planets, intricate objects like the Nomai probe or orbital probe cannon, and even distinct symbols, all of which are kind of paired with the sound played before appearing, rising up, and forming from this liquid. So to me, it seems like they definitely had sonic frequencies and how they manipulate things with them down to a T. I literally imagine the Nomai playing music, jamming out as their projection pull liquid goes crazy to the beat behind them as just a form of passing time. And I think the way they all did this is their ability granted to them by their third eye. And from here, we can just have a bit of more fun, you know? They would easily be able to communicate with each other through this method. Their third eye alone would be able to be, you know, just chatting back and forth. And they'd likely be able to read and write on their whiteboards with their eye as well. Maybe they needed their staffs for that, but I don't think they did because kids were able to just draw on the wall, you know? And the gravity wells and whatnot that we see, this is all just manipulation of vibrations and light waves that float us from one area of another, or sound waves that emit light, or however you want to say it. Their whole society was based around this special ability. In fact, being able to cut stone like that and manipulate where the stone goes like we see Solomon do with the little signposts would actually allow them to build their entire civilization with just their staff and mask alone and I mean of course their local surroundings and my favorite part of all of this is it paints a pretty awesome picture of the Nomai when the Nomai landed in the solar system yeah they were stranded but we get the picture of them coming out of their escape pods a bit frazzled waving their staffs around for a few seconds realizing hey guys we are not in the safest position right now and they just start forging civilization around them with a few flicks of their staff and sounds from their mask, like some sort of cosmic sculptor forging their surroundings to their liking. Viewing them in this sense, they do seem like some kind of master of the universe, even though we kind of know they weren't. And this would also give us a bit of a sense of how they could toy with the fabric of reality and create black hole warp cores and whatnot. They could see the universe in much better terms than almost anyone else. So maybe black holes weren't so scary or, you know, unknown to them. Back in the Alpha, the Nomai statue was actually a quantum statue where we could only see pieces of it at a time. But that suggests to me that the Nomai's third eye was always meant to be able to see something special. Like they'd be able to see the whole statue at once, while to us it's a scary quantum mess that we can only see part of. But I think that this later evolved a bit into what we see today. Finally, another feature of the Nomai mask is Solonum's instrument. While at the ancient glade, Solonum's mask actually serves as their instrument during our song. While her staff seems to be the keyboard of sorts, it sounds much like a piano. She's able to play a beautiful song right there with her staff and mask alone. And I don't think she actively taps on the screen of the pad that often. It's just our best goat girl sending good vibrations through her third eye and right into the next universe. Now, at the end of the day, I know I could be wrong about all this, but to me, their entire story makes much more sense if this were true. And I think it's a lot better than just saying, you know, they were magic or whatever. And as a bonus, a very good bonus in my opinion, if they could actually see these vibrations in space of all kinds, this may make some sense of how the Nomai were able to determine the age of the eye through its signal alone. The frequency or wavelength of the signal was sensed by their third eye, and they noticed, hey, wait a minute, this is the signal we see in the cosmic microwave background radiation, and that is a relic from the creation of the universe. This thing should not be here anymore to emit signals. This is something the Nomai would have just like inherently understood if they had this knowledge and ability, and I think that ties that together pretty well. But I will say, even if it did exist, this ability was not some kind of superpower, it's not magical. It was the Nomai's ingenuity and scientific ability that made it into something so amazing and useful. And even so, it seems like it all had its limits. It was just immediate to medium range of their surroundings, and even the staff had its limits. Like, the Nomai on the sun station were the only ones that could sense the infinitesimally small changes, and they weren't able to just wait 
wave their staff around and sense what the interloper and everything it was capable of, you know, it didn't just tell them that. They were even able to land on it and descend below its surface without their staff or eye or anything warning them of danger. Though, this may just be because it was a new frequency unknown to them, but either way, the point is it's not some super mystical power that made them magical. It was just their way the Nomai utilized their abilities and their brilliance that makes it look like magic to us. But luckily for us, in my opinion anyway, the Nomai had their third eye open, and we were able to follow in their footsteps to achieve their enlightened goal in the end. It also makes you wonder what the Nomai would have actually done and felt like if they were the ones that made it to the eye, how they would have reacted. But what do you all think? Am I a madman for even suggesting the Nomai's third eye is special? Or should we all just come to grips with the reality here and now and admit the Nomai's third eye had some kind of special ability? Because in the lore explorer's opinion, the lore and environmental story of the Nomai seems to be telling us just that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. A huge thank you to the members here on the channel. I really appreciate you all. After the update, we've gotten up to 30 members here on the channel, which is amazing. And don't think that just because this was the final big update for Outer Wilds means that my coverage of it is it over. I still have a lot to cover on the game now that it's fully released. So if you aren't, consider becoming a member, subscribing, or checking out the merch to support the channel, which, you, I mean, you can find that below, which I plan to expand a bit and, you know, give some other cool options, but I think I have a pretty cool one available now. But as always, this is the Lore Explorer, excited to bring you more Outer Wilds coverage. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.